Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Dr. Saw Faithful Life Program presented to you by Don Lumra International Hospital today. Uh, I'm your host today. My name is Dr. Mike, otherwise known as Dr. Medical Coordination Office of Don Lumra International Hospital. So today, the topic that we're going to be talking is about thyroid and its uh, disorder. So we have invited uh, Dr. Ratanon, who is the uh, one of the best endocrinologists of our Nomura International Hospital uh, in Bangkok, Thailand. So uh, Dr. Ratanon actually had his fellowship training in endocrinology, diabetes and metabolism uh, in Ohio, United States. And he is also the diplomate uh, of the American Board of uh, Internal Medicine, also the diplomate of the American Board of uh, Endocrinology, Diabetes and uh, Metabolism. So uh, during our talk, you know, if you have any questions about our talk today, please feel free to give us comments. So we will uh, answer your question. We will try to best, or we will try our best to answer your question uh, real time. So um, thank you, Dr. Rachanon. Uh, welcome to our Bangla studio today. Actually, I should have said I welcome back because I think this is our second time right. doing facial life together. Right, right. Because <laughs> last year was about uh, diabetes, right? Right, that is been a for, year already. That's for Myanmar patients. Yeah, yeah, that's right. for Myanmar patients. Today is for the international patient or patients all around the world. It's been a year. I feel like it was just yesterday. <laughs> So um, today, the topic that we will be uh, talking about is thyroid gland and its disorder. So uh, let me start off with a very basic question. Um, what is thyroid gland and uh, where is it located in our body? So the, the thyroid gland is the, the butterfly-shaped mm -hmm. gland. Uh, the side is small, it's sitting at the lower front mm -hmm. of, the, of the neck, just between uh, two collarbones. Even uh, even though the size is small, but it has um, the big and important role um, yeah. in the body because it secretes the thyroid hormone, which is the, um, the T4 and T3. Um, uh, these two hormones regulate uh, many um, organ function, including the metabolism, um, how the body um, produces the uh, the energy, how the body produces the heat, and how the body consumes the oxygen. So it influences like many um, mm -hmm. important organs uh, in the body including the brain, the heart, um, skin, um, kidney, liver. So many uh, many functions of the uh, body is under um, the influence of the thyroid. So that's why this gland is very important because when something is wrong uh, with the function of the gland it can mm -hmm. widely affect um, many um, systems of the body. Yeah. Uh, even though it's a small gland in right. our body, it's very vital to uh, many functions and you know all other organs in our body, like from right. the people, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, today our main focus is on the disorders of this thyroid gland. So um, let me separate that into two categories. Okay, uh, like uh, the functional as well as structural. So uh, what can be the functional disorders of thyroid gland? Yeah. So because the, the, the thyroid gland um, uh, produces the hormone, so when something goes wrong with the function, mm -hmm. it can be um, because of the, the gland is producing too much um, um, hormones for the, uh, mm -hmm. for the body or the overactive thyroid yeah. or hyperthyroidism or mm -hmm. it can be um, underactive thyroid or when the gland does not produce um, enough hormones, so it's called um, hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th mm -hmm. those are uh, two categories of the functional um, disorders of the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. well, can you tell us more about hypothyroidism? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the hypothyroidism uh, or the underactive um, thyroid condition, it's pretty much common. Mm -hmm. So um, the word hypo means um, not enough mm -hmm. uh, of the thyroid hormone. So like we talked before that the, uh, the thyroid hormone controls the metabolism of the body. Yeah. Um, largely. So when the hormone is not enough, mm -hmm. um, every organ in the, body, in, uh, in the body seems to slow down. Um, for example, um, as you can see on the, on the screen, um, the, um, you may not really eat as much, but mm -hmm. um, you, people can gain weight. Okay? Uh, for the brain function, um, they can become like sluggish. Um, mm -hmm. They feel like sleepy all the time, they feel like chronically um, uh, fatigue, mm -hmm. uh, they can feel like sort of like depressed and um, 
um, yeah, the heart rate can be uh, kind of slow. slow uh, uh -huh. They can't really uh, tolerate the heat. Yeah. Oh, sorry. They can't really uh, tolerate the cold. They feel cold uh -huh. uh, easier than normal. They have dry skin. Uh, uh, the, the hair uh, mm -hmm. can be coarse and, and brittle. People can have hair loss. The uh, for female, the period can be abnormal. Abnormal. Sometimes mm -hmm. they, they miss the period. Yeah. Or when it comes, it comes kind of like heavy. Mm -hmm. Or female can come in with the fertility um, mm -hmm. um, problem as well. People can have like constipation. They yeah. can have like muscle ache and pain and, and weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, or muscle cramps. So yeah. it, 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 a lot of things happening uh -huh. um, uh, to, to, to the body. So uh -huh. it can... It can be gone unrecognized for quite mm -hmm. some time yeah. um, until that, okay, um, patient themselves notice that, okay, this is quite really significant and want to find the answer, consult mm -hmm. the, the doctor. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but unless you, you don't really think about it, you may not really realize that, okay, this is um, um, caused by uh, underactive thyroid. Mm -hmm. right? So when you see a hypo um, patient, you know, the patient with the underactive uh, thyroid, like, how many symptoms, you know, you actually listed so many symptoms. Right. Uh, how many symptoms, like, normally they present with you? Well, it probably would, would, would be difficult to say, like, how uh -huh. many symptoms, uh -huh. but because, like, uh, as you can see that uh, it can be, like, so many symptoms and none of them not really quite, like, specific. I that, see. okay, uh -huh. this symptom comes, oh, okay, this is, uh -huh. like, thyroid problem. So it comes, like, uh, a group of symptoms, uh, uh -huh. mostly. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it quite requires um, uh, recognition yeah. of the uh -huh. symptoms to know that, okay, this is like um, something different, something uh -huh. unusual happens to the health. Uh -huh. uh, right. Okay. Mm. So that means that when the body, uh, the thyroid gland, uh, the, uh, like produces less hormone, all the functions and metabolism like slow down. Right. Right. So yeah. you become like inactive. Uh -huh. Right. right. And, yeah. and in case that uh, it is left, untreated it mm -hmm. can go quite severe and can be like a medical emergency oh, really? uh, in that case we call like myxedema coma which mm -hmm. means that all I mean like many organ functions are very slow down mm -hmm. and it can cause like multi-organ um, dysfunction yeah um, the uh, people have like decreased uh, mental status mm -hmm. um, can sometimes can go into coma oh they have like low temperature the breathing so slow they um, uh, the, the heart rate goes like mm -hmm. quite uh, low. They can have like body swelling. Uh, they can have a like, kidney uh, failure and many other things, electrolyte right. problems. So the the mortality rate, uh, rate is quite high, up uh -huh. to like sometimes maybe like thirty to fifty percent. So I see. It, it, um, so it's also important to uh -huh. to recognize and to treat the uh -huh. patient. So what can be the main causes of uh, hypothyroidism? Um, the uh, as, as you can see on the screen, um, the most common cause would be the autoimmune mm -hmm. um, causes, which is uh, we call the Hashimoto thyroiditis. Yep. So in this case, it is like um, uh, the thyroid gland, uh, it's being mistakenly attacked by the by immune the cells. cells. Uh -huh. right. So the body thinking that, okay, um, uh, some chemicals inside the thyroid gland not belong to themselves. Mm -hmm. And they keep they think they are like uh foreign bodies so right so like they that. produce the the, the antibodies uh -huh. attacking the the, the the thyroid gland so over the period of time it causes like chronic inflammation and uh -huh. chronic disruption so finally the can the gland can't really keep up with the hormone production anymore yeah. and that's when uh the when the symptom comes uh -huh. so mostly when when it happens like this it's kind of chronic disease and yeah. not really quite um uh, reversible mm -hmm. so uh, right um, mm. Other causes, like sometimes mm. uh, the, the underactive thyroid condition can happen after mm. the treatment of overactive thyroid. For example, if they have <laughs> uh, the treatment mm. for surgery or yeah. um, radioactive iodide for overactive thyroid, then after that, they can <clears throat> become like underactive uh, um, thyroid condition mm -hmm. afterward. So sometimes, or sometimes people have the cancer of the uh, of the neck area, for mm -hmm. example, uh, the um, uh, cancer at the uh, larynx, uh -huh. and people have like radiation. radiation uh -huh. So of course, the thyroid gland can get affected, and like the, the radiation, thyroid mm -hmm. 
um, condition may happen uh, months or years uh, mm -hmm. after that as well. Oh, is it like temporary or it can be lifelong? Unfortunately, yeah. for the underactive thyroid, including uh -huh. um, uh, happening after the radiation, is tend to be chronic and usually not reversible. Oh, really? Right. Other causes mm -hmm. um, could be medicines. Uh, some medicines um, uh, can cause an underactive thyroid, for example. Uh, the uh, amiodarone, which is a medicine to um, regulate the heart, mm -hmm. uh, rhythm or uh, lithium, which is the medicine uh, uh, that people may use for mm -hmm. um, mood disorder, for bipolar mm -hmm. disorder, for depression, that can cause mm -hmm. the underactive side well. effects of the medications right. of other right. diseases. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So can it be also uh, congenital? Yeah, that <coughs> that is the uh, minority of the patient. Uh, -huh. uh But of course, sometimes it happens. Um, since the baby is born, uh -huh. uh, if the, the gland is not formed um, properly or there's something wrong in terms of the, the, the mutation yeah. that uh, caused the, the thyroid gland cannot um, um, produce uh -huh. um, the, the biochemical reaction normally yeah. for the thyroid gland. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. So the, those <coughs> who have like autoimmune disease like Hashimoto, thyroiditis, like they are at risk of um, Having hypothyroidism, yeah, right? definitely, uh -huh. right. and then also the medication that you uh, mentioned before, uh -huh. right? So mm -hmm. if they have side effects, then it can affect the thyroid gland right. <laughs> to produce uh, less hormone. Right. I see. Okay. And how about the um, the the treatment? You know, how can you only by medication or um... right? The, the the treatment of mm -hmm. the underactive thyroid is um, to replace mm -hmm. um, the hormone that the body no longer able to produce, produce. Uh -huh. um, enough anymore. So we give the uh, uh, levothyroxine. Uh -huh. um, as you recall from maybe the first uh -huh. um, slide, the, the thyroid gland produces T4 and T3. Mm -hmm. T4 is thyroxine. Yeah. So the medicine that we're giving for underactive thyroid mm -hmm. is it's called levothyroxine. So it's pretty much the synthetic form of the natural um, thyroid hormone. So mm -hmm. um, we give that to replace uh, the amount of the hormone that the body cannot um, uh, produce yeah. for you. If we give it in the appropriate amount, mm -hmm. um, people can uh, have the um, symptoms reverse uh, mm -hmm. back to normal. It feels like just normal. Yep. And there's no concern for the side effect because this is quite like natural. That's right. right? Okay. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, you may need to take that for the long term mm -hmm. and sometimes even for for lifelong because uh -huh. the underactive thyroid seems to be chronic yeah. um, disease okay so now you have already talked about um underactive thyroid and how about the overactive hyperthyroidism okay so the the um the the overactive um thyroid condition okay uh, just to make it easier for for the audience uh, yeah. just on the screen uh, so this is a different mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. Things will be on the opposite way yeah. of just like what we talked before. In this, uh, in this overactive thyroid condition, things mm -hmm. seems to speed up. Uh -huh. uh, every working process of many organs um, systems seem to um, being quick and uh -huh. fast. For example, um, you may feel hungry a lot. You eat a lot, but uh -huh. you keep losing weight. Yeah. Okay. You can have like um, mm -hmm. heart palpitation. People can have like tremor or shaky mm -hmm. hands. They tend to feel warm all the time. Um, the, their mood become like irritable. They yeah. become like anxious, uh, uh, stress. Uh, many times they have like difficulty uh, sleeping as well. Yeah. They can have like muscle weakness. Um, uh, well, muscle weakness, you can also have muscle weakness in hypothyroidism. Right, right? yeah, both uh, of them can, can cause like I muscle see. weakness. This is a similarity of the symptoms between hyper and hypo. Right, uh -huh. right. And uh, for the bowel movements, uh -huh. people can have like hyperdefication. I mean, they, they move their bowel like uh, more frequently uh -huh. and softer than normal. For, for female health, uh, that can also be abnormal, a regular period as well. Uh -huh. And also it can, again, uh, affect the uh -huh. fertility function of female too. Yeah, I see. Right. So, uh, how about the causes of hyper, and who are the, I mean, the, who are at risk of having uh, hyper? The, mm. the, um, just like on the screen, mm. uh, pretty mm. much, uh, the most common age group to mm -hmm. be affected by the overactive thyroid would be uh, the age group of about like twenty to forty year mm -hmm. old, um, but we can see it in older uh, patients or even younger than this as mm -hmm. well, and uh, female seems to be at mm -hmm. much. 
uh, higher risk to mm -hmm. um, to get overactive thyroid. Yeah. Uh, usually, like even like eight times mm -hmm. uh, more common um, than uh, in men, and uh, because again for the overactive thyroid um, condition, most of the time it's come from the autoimmune condition mm -hmm. as well. Of course, in the different version, yeah. uh, so it is more common if that person has personal history of other autoimmune disease. Uh, for example, like vitiligo, which is the uh, the, the, the skin disease that people have, like the white uh, mm -hmm. depigmented yeah. uh -huh. um, skin um, patches in the uh, on the body, or if they have like type one diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, which is also the autoimmune disease as well. Yeah. So this seems to be common mm -hmm. if you have the personal history of the autoimmune disease, or if they have the the family history of the um, the thyroid problems, that that make them at higher risk to have the mm -hmm. overactive thyroid as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So uh, let's talk about treatment. You know, for hypothyroidism, you said uh, medication is uh, the good choice of treatment. But for hypothyroid, uh, I think there can be more than medication, right? So what are the other treatment options that patient can have apart from medication? Right. So <laughs> the mainly the, the treatment of the overactive thyroid um, condition has, has three options. Mm -hmm. First, it's for the um, anti-thyroid medicine. Second is the um, relative iodine treatment, yeah. and for the third one is for surgery. surgery. So um, the surgery we don't really use it as often. Yeah, we do it only if, uh, for example, if uh, we also detect that in in the thyroid gland they have uh -huh. the lump that also looks yeah. suspicious for cancer that we need to remove it anyway. Uh -huh. So this may we may prefer just okay just yeah. remove the thyroid gland to treat the overactive thyroid uh -huh. as well, or if people have uh, such a large um, goiter that the, the size of the goiter of the thyroid gland is just so large that uh -huh. cause like um, compression yeah. uh, uh, to the, the breathing system and cause like a lot of discomfort. Mm -hmm. Or um, if people cannot really be treated by other, mm -hmm. um, uh, of other way, then we may do uh, the surgery. Then um, the other treatment would be the anti-thyroid medicine. So, mm -hmm. Uh, this medicine uh, block the the new production of the the thyroid hormone from the gland. Mm -hmm. So um, if we keep uh, giving this medicine to the patient, the new hormone production from the gland is less. Uh, the hormone level for the thyroid um, hormone um, become lower, and the symptom is going away, and mm -hmm. and, uh, and the feels okay. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Um, after a year and a half or two years of, of uh, taking the anti-thyroid medicine, after we stop, up to like maybe 40% of the patient, the disease may, may come back. Oh, really? Right. So there's a chance of recurrence. Right, um, there's a chance of recurrence as mm. well. So, um, but in some select group of patients, for example, uh, they don't have uh, any bad factor that indicate uh, more refractory disease. For example, mm -hmm. the big uh, size of goiter, yeah. or men who smoked, or uh, people who have like very high thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. And when we diagnose the patients, or um, sometimes we can do the labs to mm -hmm. check the antibodies that stimulate the thyroid gland to yeah. produce the hormone. If that antibody is very mm -hmm. high, yeah. then this uh, this factor usually uh -huh. indicate that okay it's high likelihood that the uh -huh. disease may come back yeah so if they don't really have any of these factors they they have higher chance mm -hmm. that they, the disease may go into remission mm -hmm. after um, a cause of one and a half or two years of I the anti-thyroid medicine uh -huh. and the the last uh, the last option would be um, radiative iodine mm -hmm. so the uh, the iodine is the element um, that the body uh, used mainly uh, by, the, by the thyroid gland actually to produce the the new thyroid hormone. So mm -hmm. if we give the um, radio radioactivity mm -hmm. with the with the iodine, uh, after you give it, it being concentrated inside the thyroid gland, mm -hmm. the radioactivity comes out and uh, it it's a blade the, uh -huh. the 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 overactive gland to be I smaller see. to be less active and the hormone. Uh, level can be back to normal. Okay, I see. Uh, 
in order to uh, like uh, lessen the production of thyroid hormone, right? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all about the hyper and hypothyroidism. So before we move on to the next topic, uh, can we check the questions that audience might have? <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, if you want to make medical inquiry or if you want to uh, set up an appointment for telemedicine with uh, any of our doctors in Bamlungra, uh, please have a look at the first comment. We have uh, some link, so you can click, click those links uh, in order to make medical inquiry or uh, set up an appointment with our doctors in Bamlungra. And please feel free, feel free to ask so many questions. <laughs> we are happy to answer. <laughs> if we don't have time, yeah, we will answer later. Or you can email us anytime. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, questions. Um, uh, there is someone from Bangladesh, um, MD Delwar, Hosen. He asked a question like, is there a higher risk of developing thyroid disease if I have diabetes? Are they related, diabetes and thyroid? Uh -huh. um, well, uh, of course, if they have type 1 diabetes, uh -huh. uh, which is another autoimmune disease, uh -huh. then you are at higher risk to, to have the thyroid problem as well because uh, type 1 diabetes is uh, autoimmune disease and uh, overactive thyroid or underactive thyroid condition. Uh, mostly it's because of the un uh, autoimmune condition. As well. But uh -huh. the diabetes that we see commonly is, is uh -huh. type 2 diabetes. Is ninety five percent of the patient. It's it per se not really increased the, uh -huh. the risk to have uh -huh. the um, the thyroid problems. I see. And another question that he asks is like, what are the early warning signs of thyroid problems? Well, I think it's quite broad. <laughs> quite broad. Um, first of all, um, um, abnormally change of uh -huh. the body weight. Uh huh. Um, and um, um. Uh, feeling weak, fatigued, tired, uh -huh. or um, it can be other things like muscle ache and pain, yeah. or um, your your mood, uh, irritable mood, yeah. or more depressed or lethargic. Yeah. Uh, those are the common symptoms that the, the thyroid patient presents. I see. Thank you. And um, another question from Laura. Uh, dear doctor, thank you for an interesting topic. Thank you for watching us too. So uh, she asked, like, uh, what foods was in Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Well, um, if, if if patient goes in Google, there's like long list of, of, of food, food. That, okay, <laughs> to avoid this, to eat this and, this, and yeah. that. And unfortunately, there is no certain food that you should or should not eat. Uh -huh. yeah. Even sometimes they say that, okay, um, uh, seafood uh -huh. or um, like um, cabbage, things like that, that we should avoid and it's actually it's okay, um, it's okay. to have. I right? see. Yeah. Thank you. So just, just pretty much the, the healthy uh -huh. uh, diet in general. Uh, looking it into the other way, um, because of the underactive thyroid, they tend to have like slower metabolism. Mm -hmm. So um, if the food is not as high on the calorie, uh -huh. then it may lessen the uh, the weight, gain weight uh -huh. that they may have. Yeah. And also for the overactive thyroid, I mean, they usually um, come with um, being thin, they have uh -huh. lost their weight. After the treatment, they tend to, to gain weight, sometimes yeah. very quickly, that especially for, for female patients, they don't really like it. Uh -huh. So yeah. usually I, I would I would warn uh, my patient that, okay, to be careful on your diet, you uh -huh. can't really eat as much as calories as uh -huh. before when you have in the overactive thyroid uh -huh. anymore because it will cause you to gain uh, uh, weight quite quickly. Uh -huh. I see. So just balance and healthy diet uh -huh. would be good. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, for asking this question. Uh, I'm sure now you have knowledge about what to eat, you know, if you have um, Hashimoto thyroiditis. And uh, oh, there are actually so many questions. Thanks for watching and thanks for asking questions. Um, Another question is from Abdes. Uh, he asked, uh, what should not be eaten if you have hyperthyroidism? Again, there's again, no, right, again, kind there's of similar no question. Uh -huh. right. Again, there's yeah. no specific food to avoid. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. And another question is from Ayan. Uh, can I live a normal life with Hashimoto's disease? Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, it's actually um, the, um, well, Hashimoto's uh -huh. uh, thyroiditis or 
um, Hashimoto disease uh -huh. um, that they call uh, it can be just by detection of the antibody it's uh -huh. attacking the thyroid gland um, many times we see that by by the lab test uh -huh. but the hormone uh, function the hormone production of the thyroid gland remains normal uh -huh. and it remain it may remain normal for life yeah but of course, when you have the antibody is positive, you have um, Hashimoto thyroid disease, you are at higher chance mm -hmm. to develop the, the thyroid hormone um, abnormality. Yeah. For example, the underactive thyroid. Uh -huh. Even though that uh, you become underactive thyroid already, uh, by taking the, the medicine, which is the thyroxine, you live not normal life. I see. Right, the labs will be back to normal. The symptoms goes away, and uh, people, people, people are fine. Uh -huh. Right. I see. Okay. Um, Aroni, Aroni said very valuable information. Many thanks. Oh, thank you too. Thanks for your time to watch our live. And another one, NT Cho said, uh, we are fan club. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for being our fans. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. So um. Let's move on to another topic, which is about the structural disorders. Okay, so now we have already covered the functional disorders, so let's move on to structural. So um, what can be the structural disorders? Um, okay, first, I think... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys, I think I, I would... Like on, on, actually on our website, uh -huh. they already have um, put on uh, the small... Uh, clip of video to how to check your right, how to check uh, your, yeah. your 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 so you can and, check your thyroid yeah, uh, yeah, at yeah, home yeah. right uh -huh. yeah so just on the screen that actually what you would need is just just a glass of water you need a handheld mirror, mirror uh -huh. okay and uh, you pretty much um look at the mirror and focusing on the lower front of your uh -huh. neck okay just between two collarbone uh -huh. and midline just below the adam's apple yeah. okay in that area is the, the the thyroid gland okay so um, then you you tilt your head back a little yeah. bit. You take a sip of water and then you swallow. Uh -huh. So usually when you swallow, the thyroid gland would move up. Okay, and then if you see any uh, anything protruding from that area or the lump or anything abnormal in that area, that is likely to be the coiter or uh -huh. to be the thyroid nodule. So I if see. you if you notice that, of course you should cons consult your doctor uh -huh. uh, because you may have uh, the structural problems of the uh -huh. thyroid. Uh, gland, right. okay. So um, uh, on the next screen, this is some um, examples of the goiter and the nodule. So mm -hmm. the word goiter means the enlargement uh, of the of the thyroid gland, and the nodules mean a small growth yeah. uh, within the thyroid gland. So um, sometimes uh, it's quite large that people can notice that uh, by themselves mm -hmm. or by their friends or family. That all of the of the gland looks like a lot like the on the mm -hmm. on the first yeah. uh, picture, and um, sometimes they notice like uh, the nodule which can be one or can be more than one can be left or right. Um, so that that's uh, uh, the example of the, mm -hmm. the the goiter and the thyroid nodules. Mm -hmm. But usually, patients don't really have any symptoms. They mostly don't really feel any pain. Uh, they just notice that okay, there's something um, on the neck, mm -hmm. or sometimes even uh, being detected by the doctor. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. So only sometimes that uh, people may report uh, the compression, uh -huh. compression uh, symptoms. For example, difficulty swallowing, difficulty breathing, breathing or they uh -huh. have voice mm -hmm. change. Uh, yeah. But mm -hmm. otherwise, most of them don't really have uh, uh -huh. the symptoms. So that means uh, these nodules are not always cancerous, right? Uh -huh. Right. So, so even though that uh, only the small percentage uh -huh. of the nodule would be cancer, in general, is about like five to oh, ten okay. percent um, to Very be low cancer. But uh -huh. um, nowadays, we see that the the, uh, the thyroid cancer is actually much more common mm -hmm. uh, than than before, mm -hmm. right? So. It is good that you have a way to check it and recognize uh -huh. it so that uh, you can discuss with the doctor to make sure that, okay, this is not something serious. This is yeah. not cancer. Yeah. Right. And to get the, the proper treatment uh, immediately. I see. Right. So in order to make your mind clear, like, okay, my no-do is not cancerous. So 
like if the patient like um notice a uh, nodule in uh thyroid gland like should we should they like uh proceed on to like a biopsy or any other i mean further investigations in order to know whether it is cancerous or not right. yeah. so on the screen we have we have um th this picture was we show that uh when we when we have a person coming in with uh, with the nodule, the mm -hmm. thyroid nodule or the goiter, of course we start with a physical exam. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to feel if the nodule is hard, is it soft, is mm -hmm. it fixed, is yeah. it movable, is the voice okay, or they have any other signs of compression to the uh -huh. windpipe or to the trachea, and then we usually run the blood test to check on the thyroid um, hormone level to see yeah. if they also have the functional problem as well for example too too high thyroid hormone yeah. or too low thyroid yeah. hormone and then the next uh investigation is very helpful uh it's the thyroid ultrasound which yeah. is uh, simple uh, but give us a lot of information uh, it can measure the size of the yeah. whole thyroid gland can look inside the thyroid gland to see the texture to see the circulation the blood supply to the thyroid gland to detect if there's any real nodules inside and if that is the nodule, what is the composition of it? Yeah. It is like the fluid filled cyst or, or is it solid? If it's mixed between um, solid and, and, and the liquid. And all of these, uh, we can evaluate how, how much would it be concerned yeah. uh, for, uh, for thyroid cancer. And if we see that the nodule looks kind of concerning for cancer, the next step that we send the patient to the fine needle aspiration, mm -hmm. uh, which the, 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 the procedure is it's quite simple. Yeah. That, okay, we numb the skin, okay, and then we use a very small needle, uh, needle, needle. Uh, under the ultrasound to locate the, mm -hmm. the nodule that we, we want to get the, the sample from it. And then we poke, uh, 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 draw some, some cells or some, so some sample from the nodules. Uh, sent to the pathology lab so yeah. that we can see okay how likely uh, that nodule to be cancer I so see. that we can plan for the for the next step should we just watch or we need the surgery uh -huh. or do we need to repeat the FNA in the future okay so depending on the result of the biopsy the right. treatment can be very very right there can be many right. tre treatment options but it, it's yeah. not it's not that all patients would need uh -huh. a biopsy mm -hmm. if the if the ultrasound say that okay the nodule seems to be uh, small mm -hmm. and not have any type of picture that is concerning which yeah. is that okay we don't really need any biopsy uh -huh. we just watch and maybe repeat the ultrasound in the future for example could be like six months or things I like see. that so uh, let's say if the patient has like thyroid cancer, is thyroid cancer as scary as other type of cancers in our body? Uh, uh, okay, on, on, on uh -huh. this screen, okay, um, pretty much uh, the, the thyroid cancer is a good kind of cancer. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, usually uh, it's very slow growing most of the time, uh -huh. like 95% of the thyroid cancer usually are slow growing, uh, not really uh, cause a lot of symptoms mm -hmm. and we, we can treat it uh, mainly by surgery and like 95 or even 99 percent of patients can be killed uh -huh. uh, from the cancer the the, the step of treatment how about the recurrence rate uh, the recurrence rate it seems to be usually low uh -huh. but of course you need to get the proper steps of the treatment which mm -hmm. mainly start with the with the surgery yeah okay and if we if we detect that the, the, there is lymph gland involvement uh -huh. or the metastasis of the uh, of the lymph gland on the neck, then we need to remove uh, that lymph gland as well. So yeah. here comes uh, the role of the good surgeon yeah. okay, mm -hmm. to do uh, the, the adequate but no complication uh -huh. uh, from surgery to, to, to remove all the suspicious uh, lymph gland and also the thyroid gland too. Yeah reduce the chance of the cancer um, to be back mm -hmm. and if uh, the size of the cancer is large enough or we have concern that the, uh, the, the cancer may come back we usually give the additional treatment by the radiotic iodine mm -hmm. uh, again the, the iodine usually goes into the thyroid um, cells with the radioactivity it will uh, destroy the residual yeah. um, cells that is left behind after the surgery 
and limit the chance of the cancer mm -hmm. uh, for for coming back. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, and that's... of course, after that, we we need to give the mm -hmm. uh, the the thyroid medicine if uh -huh. we remove the whole thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, let's look at the, some of the questions. Um, okay, uh, there's another question from uh, Mr. Kamula. Kamala, sorry if I sorry if I mispronounce your names. Uh, please <laughs> accept my apology. Uh, he asked like after thyroidectomy operation, will patient uh, I mean the, the the all the symptoms will be relieved after the surgery after removal of the thyroid? Well, um, I would say yes, uh -huh. but not sure if this question. Ask because patient initially have uh -huh. the overactive thyroid or the large goiter mm -hmm. or or the cancer. But yes, in general, um, after the after the surgery, if or the if it's because of the overactive thyroid, then uh -huh. uh, the hormone will be back to normal. Uh -huh. And then if there is the compression from the nodule that is just so large, we removed it. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the symptom goes away. I see. Right? And there is another question from Mr. Arif. Uh, he asks, uh, can thyroid affect testosterone? Uh, yes, indirectly uh -huh. it, it can affect the, uh, the testosterone uh -huh. as well. The underactive um, thyroid conditions um, sometimes have the low uh -huh. um, uh, uh, testosterone as well. Uh -huh. right. okay. yeah. Thank you for asking questions. Um, and another question is from Mary Mabel. Uh, my question is, uh, can a Hashimoto's patient get pregnant normally? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, they can get um, pregnant normally. Um, although we need to, to watch uh -huh. the, um, the, the level of the hormones, including the, the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, uh -huh. uh, to make sure that it's in the, it's in the good range. Uh -huh. And also, uh, many times we also check the antibody, yeah. the anti-thyroid peroxidase, yes. uh, and um, to see do we need to to supplement them with mm -hmm. more um, with a uh, with more uh, uh, thyroid hormone. Yep. But of course, if they are already taking the thyroid medicine, the thyroxine, uh, even before pregnancy, they need higher dose uh -huh. during the pregnancy. For example, can the dose need to be increased by about like thirty percent, things like that, because uh -huh. the natural increase uh, in requirement during the pregnancy, uh -huh. because it's for you and also for the fetus as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> there's another question from Mo Shira. Uh, his question is: At which, uh, at what age uh, do thyroid problems start? Uh, any age limit? Uh, I would say no age limit. Uh -huh. uh, of course, it, it can it can happen very early. Yeah. Uh, the kids can have the underactive thyroid. They can have uh -huh. overactive thyroid as well. But the the most common uh, age group um, population would be about like um, the middle age. Middle age. Like okay. 20, 30, 40. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But older than that, we we see it, uh, especially. Um, underactive thyroid seems to be even more common when you are older too. Uh -huh. mm. I see. And there's another question which is similar to the previous one. Can a one-year-old have thyroid problems? <laughs> Sorry? Can a one-year-old baby uh, have yes. thyroid problems? Yes, I mean in that case, uh, it, could be, it could be the congenital, uh -huh. um, the hypothyroidism, or, or sometimes um, uh, the baby who is born with mother who have like the thyroid problems, uh -huh. they may be born with sort of like lower range of the thyroid hormones that many times the uh, pediatric endocrinologist uh -huh. they would supplement or to give the thyroid hormone uh, at the beginning and then they keep shaking and follow on the on the thyroid hormone and later on when it's improved they would just stop and watch mm -hmm. most of the time they do okay with that thank you so um, in Bamlongra, in our hospital, uh, we have a special specialist clinic like for endocrinology and diabetes, right? So I want to know, I want to let the audience know how well the center is equipped with like facilities, modern facilities to be able to diagnose thyroid problems. Right. Uh, I, I think that that's something I would be very proud of. Uh -huh. 
of being part of the thyroid care patient thyroid uh, patient care team over uh -huh. here that we work in collaboration with other specialties we have uh, like multidisciplinary team for uh -huh. for the thyroid uh, patient um, if even though that the case can be like very um, complicated they have complications that involve like other specialty um, we have the team to support you and yeah. solve the problem for you for example um, sometimes people have the overactive thyroid and they have the eye involvement and uh -huh. they have like very bulgy eyes sometimes even vision uh, threatening uh, we have the good uh, uh, the ophthalmologist uh -huh. who can solve the problems who can do the surgery Especially uh, like oculoplastic ophthalmologists. Right, oculoplastic uh, mm -hmm. um, um, ophthalmologists can mm -hmm. help us. Uh, when we have... So things things start from the beginning. Yeah. We have the lab uh, to check on the, on the as we can see on, 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 the, on the screen. We can do the, the lab test for the thyroid hormone that will come within like two hours. Uh -huh. So that we can, we can move on for the next step of, of the treatment. We can do the thyroid ultrasound. We have the diagnostic radiologist who... Yeah a well-trained uh, uh, on reading the, 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 the thyroid um, yeah. ultrasound. It helps us a lot to evaluate the risk uh, of the cancer uh, for, for patients. Um, th there's one thing we'd like to introduce uh, to the audience as well. It's called cervical lymph node mapping ultrasound. This is something that's quite unique mm -hmm. uh, here that only few hospitals in Thailand um, oh, have yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Is that we do the detailed ultrasound of the neck uh, to focus on the the lymph gland on the neck like we do the map yeah of the all the the lymph gland on the neck uh to see on every area okay to see if any lymph gland that looks suspicious any gland that possibly uh involved by the cancer it helps us a lot to to plan uh, uh the surgery for the patient so this is why outcome uh, of the surgery of patient at Bermuda for thyroid cancer is very good with uh -huh. uh, less complications and, and more um, accurate mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the uh, investigation so that yeah. we can plan it properly. Uh -huh. We can do the, the thyroid scan and thyroid uptake, which is the nuclear yeah. study. When people come in with the, the um, overactive thyroid and they have the nodule, we can detect that if the nodule is overactive, uh -huh. overproducing the hormones or not. We can do the fine needle aspiration by the uh, uh, good experience, uh -huh. uh, the radiologists who, who do that. We have the result come in within like uh, two days, three days, we know the result. Yeah. And when the patient needs the surgery, uh, we have the uh, good teams of the surgeon who can do the conventional uh, thyroidectomy mm -hmm. uh, patient, which means that uh, open yeah. and remove the thyroid gland. Also, we have the option for the uh, minimally invasive. Like laparoscopy. Uh, right, uh -huh. right, for a surgery mm. for the thyroid, which they can do um, uh, the, the scope, uh -huh. okay, coming from the armpit, uh -huh. okay, and remove the thyroid gland, or they do the incision behind the lower lip. Uh -huh. Okay, so we not have any scar. Scar, that visible. People can, right, yeah. right. So that's the problem room. because most of the girls, you know, like after right. having thyroid surgery, yeah. they still want to wear like necklace. Right. And, you know, so right. It, it, because it, <laughs> unfortunately, the young females, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. they, they get affected a lot by by the thyroid condition. So yeah, yeah we have the options. Uh huh. Uh, scarless. Yeah. Uh, the surgery, or if they don't want to do the surgery and the nodule is benign, is mm -hmm. not cancerous. We have the non-surgical option. For example, we can do the radio frequency uh -huh. uh, ablation, or we can do um, HIFU, which is a high intensity focus yeah. um, ultrasound. So uh, this is non-invasive or yeah. very minimal invasive uh, that, we can, that we can do uh, the procedure to create the mm -hmm. heat inside the, the nodule yeah. and then uh, cause uh, the nodule to, to shrink to avoid the surgery in case the patient have the compassion symptoms uh -huh. and um, or sometimes they can do the ethanol uh -huh. uh, injection inside the uh, the cyst the large cyst uh -huh. of the thyroid gland so that prevent it from coming back so uh -huh. all of these uh, um, options is available here at Bamungrat and we have uh -huh. the, the good team to to, to support uh, uh -huh. patients yeah. any 
any any cases any uh, direction people can go and we we work as a team and we with the good plan for yeah. for, for the patient thank you uh let's see whether we still have some more questions from the audience oh uh if uh there's another question from arif uh he asked like, if like patient has thyroid sits uh do they need to be removed well first of all mm -hmm. if the if that cyst if it's only pure cyst yeah or largely just liquid uh -huh. you see the chance of of the cyst to be cancer is quite low yep. um so if we're going to remove it then we're not going to remove it just because the concern to be cancer mm -hmm. we may do that if the patient report the symptoms of compression yeah they can't really breathe well they can't really swallow well then okay then we may need to to remove it but of course the the non-surgical option is there as well i see yeah, but wow. if if the cyst is small doesn't cause any symptom usually the chance of it to be cancer it's low no symptom we can just observe uh -huh. yeah. right so i think uh, our endocrinologist dr retinon uh, has talked uh, very detailed about thyroid problems and their treatment options and also the um, advanced um, the diagnostic uh, techniques that we have here in bambungra and also the specialists um, the multidisciplinary teams that we have here in bambungra uh to provide you the holistic care if you have thyroid problem so uh but if you still have like some more questions if you are a thyroid patient or if you have a like a family member who has thyroid problem in your family please feel free free to email us uh, if you want to consult uh with dr retinol and if you are currently abroad and if you are not able to come because of covid uh we can also provide a telemedicine uh, consultation for you from your home okay you don't have to leave your home and if you can come or we will also be uh, taking care of you the best okay uh, as usual bambungra is the best um uh, healthcare center so uh if you may notice um there are some links uh, down below in the first comment uh, you can click those links uh, to make medical inquiries. You can send your uh, medical reports regarding your thyroid and we can uh, consult with our specialists here and we can reply back to you. It's totally free of charge. And then also, uh, if you want to make appointment for telemedicine, you can also uh, click the link uh, provided uh, in the first comment. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for uh, watching us today and thanks for your time. And during this COVID time, uh, let's beat this COVID together. Let's beat this pandemic together. Okay, so wherever you are from, if the vaccine is available in your area, get vaccinated. Okay, so we will go through, get through it together. We will beat this pandemic and we will all be meeting uh, again in the near future. So thanks for your time today and thanks uh, Dr. Rachano for your um, uh, very knowledgeable um, information about thyroid uh, disorders and their treatment and about our uh, specialist clinic in Bambungra. So uh, thanks for your time too. Okay. So uh, until next time, take care. Thank you.